David Hunt talks about a shakeout. When you look at the public markets, it definitely feels like we're at a cycle turn. What do you make of the volatility we're seeing right now and whether it signals some kind of regime change? Um, I think that, quite frankly, the volatility that we are seeing is, uh, to a certain extent, somewhat predictable. I mean, we have had the Fed, we have had the ECB really come out, you know, with guidance and a lot of rhetoric around the fact that they do want to see inflation go down further and make sure that that's a sustainable trend prior to actually starting to lower rates. And I think that, to a certain extent, it never really sunk into the consciousness of the market. So I think that, finally, we're starting to come to that realization, and I think that's going to have some very profound um, um, uh, consequences. Some of them are going to be technical, as again, money is, as you mentioned, all of a sudden racing to rates once again, mm -hmm. potentially leaving other riskier asset classes. And again, from fundamental perspective, valuations all of a sudden um, seem, uh, shall I say, even more stretched. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been stretched for a while and perhaps a little bit more stretched now. Of course, right now you can add geopolitical concerns to the mix as well as uh, what we talked about, the idea that uh, inflation is stickier than anticipated, maybe even accelerating, and so any interest rate cut just gets pushed further out. How do you think about the prospect of dislocation, severe dislocation among asset prices right now? I do think that uh, we are most probably at crossroads, and I wouldn't be surprised to actually see the market come down here, especially, again, as it pertains to credit. What we have seen at the beginning of this year is yields stay pretty uh, flat, even though rates have continued to come up, and as a function of that, spreads have been compressed. Yeah. I do think that we are going to see a little bit of a catch-up, and I think that that will lead to a correction in terms of credit markets, uh, and not only, again, the more levered structures, but also, again, investment-grade companies, which is again, what everybody chased when rates started coming down from a spread point of view. So given all that, what kind of opportunities do you see now with us kind of on the brink of some big changes versus when you first launched? Uh, do you have to be more selective now or are, are you now getting the opportunity to buy into some stuff that perhaps before you weren't looking at? Well, so it's interesting because it really depends on your strategy and it very much depends on the investor. Again, like if you're investing from a strategy that, again, tends to target lower volatility, lower yield, lower spread type of product, I do think you need to be very cautious because we are starting to see a lot of dispersion, mm -hmm. again, both in equity and in credit in terms of companies' performance. And we think that on the back of that, there will be a lot of landmines, right? The flip side of that is, again, for somebody like us that tend to invest in, you know, more stressed and, you know, higher yielding type of product, that obviously presents an opportunity on the back end. But one thing is, in my view at least for certain, dispersion has picked up significantly. And even though for the first three months of the year, water seemed very placid, both mm -hmm. in equities and credit, and the rally was significant, we continue to see increase of companies that are coming under pressure on the back of, again, some structural issues, some cyclical issue, and on the back of two years of elevated rates.